Have you ever asked a question that sounded like it would have a pretty simple answer, but then when you thought about it a little more, you were like, huh, there's actually a lot more to this than I expected there to be. Well, that's what this video is. How many Roblox games are there really? It seems like a pretty basic question, but it goes way deeper than anything even I expected. So without further ado, let's begin. So how do we even begin to calculate any of this? Personally, I feel like this is what we should start with. One parent, which is this, one instance, and no properties. Got it? Good. So now how many instances or parents are there? After I counted them all, which it took me like an hour, I got about 168 of them. Now, because 168 options is the amount of one layer, you need to multiply 168 by itself for the amount of layers there are. Why? Well, let me show you. So, for one separate layer, you can have this as one option, or this as another, or even this as another, up to 168. Now, add another layer in there. So, in this case, there are now two layers, which now means you can have all 168 options on both of them. So, that's 168 times 168, or 168 to the power of 2, which is already 28,224 options. And that's for only two layers. Now we need to know, how many total layers can there potentially be? Well, based on the fact that a shit ton of stuff tends to break here, at 2 to the 31, 2 to the 31 seems like the total amount of layers that can exist, though I don't really have much to verify that with other than that's just where things like your position break, or GUI size, for instance. This means we already need to take 168 to the 2.147483648 billionth power, which is already, get this, 1.77384511741 times 10 to the 4 billion 778 million 815,294. That is the 4.7 billionth power. If you thought that was insane enough, now we need to consider the fact that there can likely be up to 2 to the 31 instances per layer. So what do we do now? We use factorials, represented by an exclamation point after the number. This is because you can have up to 2147483648 total instances for every layer, or 2147483647, or 2147483646, yeah you probably get the idea. So anyways, what actually are factorials? Well, they cause a number to be multiplied from 1 up to it in terms of integers. So in this case of 3 factorial, it's 1 times 2 times 3, or 6. 4 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4, or 24. And 5 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, or 120. You see how fast this is growing, right? So what do you think 2147483648 factorial is? Well, it's 2.4233477 times 10 to the 19 billion 107,526,497. Yeah, I told you shit was gonna get off the rails really fucking quick. Oh, also, we then need to take that to the power of the previous shit I calculated due to the fact that you can have all the exact same copies of layering set up because when you deal with this stuff, you multiply different things for combinations, but if you do with exact copies, you take it to the power of stuff. So let's say you have one red stud, one blue stud, and one green stud. You can have one one, one two, one three, two one, two two, two three, or three one, three two, three three. That is nine combinations. Now say you have two groups of that. It's nine times nine, or nine to the second power, which is 81. Regardless, this is now our equation, which gives us the total of 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the power of 9.6793202458852213, which is, ahem, ahem, get this, 10 to the 10 to the 4.77885304530010 billion, or 10 to the 3.3892 times 10 to the 4 billion, 778 million, 815,304. That is a one followed by literally 3 times 10 to the 4.778 billion zeros. That is absolutely fucking ridiculous. Just 
Wow. Properties. We still need to consider those, and there is a lot of them. This is the point where I was like, oh crap, I need to make an Excel sheet. So I did. And if you want to see all the detailed breakdowns in each instance, it's linked in the description and in the pinned comment. So what I did is I split them up by category and then counted all the instances per said category. And then after that, I counted the number of a certain property, like a double, a float, it's 64, it's 32, and other stuff like it. So there's that. But there is still things I have to consider. Mostly the parent part of the property, because some instances have more than one potential parent or adorney, which are these. So how do we do these? Well, it's actually quite simple. Using the same strat we did to calculate all the layering stuff, you take the amount of parent combinations on average, so in this case for accessory it's two, and then you subtract it by one because we can isolate one of those parent properties since absolutely everything has at least one. We also need to do the same for strings, but instead of multiplying it by the parent equation, you multiply it by the string equation, which is 149,878 to the power of 200,000. Why is it like that? Because in Unicode, according to this Wikipedia article, there are that many characters, and according to this dev forum post, there are 200,000 separate slots for characters. Also, we need enums, because I had to take the total number of enums per list, which an enum is this by the way, and multiply them all together. And it actually got an entire section on my spreadsheet. And then you just multiply everything out like normal. So, like this. Anyways, after I counted all the properties for absolutely every single category, this is what we are left with. 1.0358 times 10 to the 830 combinations for 3D interfaces, 3.3222 times 10 to the 822 combinations for adornments, 4.8208 times 10 to the 60 combinations for ads, 3.5683 times 10 to the 698 combinations for animations, 1.8509 times 10 to the 963 combinations for constraints, and blah blah blah, so on and so forth down the list, leaving us with this equation. So, what else is left to consider? We've basically done everything by this point, so surely there wouldn't be anything else, right? Well, there's still two more things. One, parents. I left those out earlier because if I didn't, it would just make calculating this way more annoying. Also, it just looks better that way. So, how we calculate the parents is adding all of them up from every single category to account for all the stuff there is. Then, you take the parent equation from way earlier, which is 15, which is the total amount of top layers, times 2.1474836488 billion factorial, times 168, to the power of 2.1474836488. To the power of that. Then, we multiply it by the entirety of all the instance combinations. The answer to 15 times 2.1474836488 times 168 times 2.1474836488 to the power of the number of parents, which I counted to be 300.16, and yes, fractional parents are possible, switching a boolean changes the possible amount of parents. This gives an answer of um, 10 to the 10 to the 12.8555024590809, or roughly 7.1697 times 10 to the 12 trillion. So now what we need to do is multiply that by all of the layer and instance combinations, which gives a total of 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the power of 9.6793202458852 times 10 to the 10 to the 12.8555024590809 times all of the possible instance combinations, which is 4.82702202053 times 10 to the 12,826. And then we gotta account for all the strings, which multiplies by another 1.22448373125 times 10 to the 205,080,652. And we still aren't even done yet. Why? Because of these motherfuckers. Yeah, you know how strips can kind of have text inside them? Well, we kind of have to account for that too, which we then multiply by literally everything else. So how do we do it? Remember that string equation from before? We just need to use that. But, there's one catch. Instead of just taking it to the power of 200,000, we instead need to take it to the power of 2147483648 times 65536. All over the fact that after 65,536 characters, it says the length is too long, and there's likely that many possible lines in the script, 
even if the highest I got to before Rolex Studio crashed was only 1 to 2 million. So that is 140.737488 trillion. So all we do is take 149,878 to the power of that for the answer of 9.6312410024 times 10 to the 728 trillion, 851 billion, 916 million, 291,195 per script. So now you know what we have to do. We need to multiply that by literally everything else. Now we can finally get the real answer to this stupid question that no one has ever asked anyway. Except me, I guess. So finally, after literally three weeks of banging my head against the fucking wall figuring this stuff out, this is our answer. 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 9167-932024588-5211 or 10 to the 10 to the 4.7788-153045-3008 billion or 10 with literally that many zeros behind it. Which, that number of zeros, if converted to an actual illion, like million, billion, trillion, makes this 10 to the power 477 quator trigant to quadrant to octomillion nilly trace my really novem deci my really do my crilly novem deci my crilly quincenti my crilly unanillion digits long that is a 10 with this many zeros behind it and that is the 1.5 billionth illion Actually, this is so large that I don't even think there's any way to give it context at all. Like, even one Googleplex at this scale, which is quite literally 10 to the Google, or 10 to the 10 to 100, is basically zero. Actually, the number of zeros you would need to write after that one, even if they were one atom big, would basically be that many times bigger than the observable universe itself, which is already 93 billion light years wide. That is insane. And honestly, I think I need to name this number like MatPat did with his video on how many Mario Maker levels there are. So I think I will name it a Roblox Plex. Yeah, I think that sounds reasonable enough. So anyways, did you guys think that the number would get this big? Because I absolutely didn't. Roll the outro, I guess. So anyway, a big thank you to Blocktance for helping me with all the initial calculations for the video and stuff. Also, by the way, I do have Patreon if you want to check that out. The link is in the pinned comment and in the description. And if you also like this style of content, I now have I have three other videos on the matter, which is this one on Roblox's floating point, this one on the far lands of Minecraft, and this one on how deep Minecraft's void is. So if you want 45 minutes more of content today, go check those videos out. And uh, yeah, that's all I got really got to say. So goodbye.